Anu and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you joined me today for another tutorial and I'm super excited because today we are going to learn so many things together. So if you remember I had told you last time that I was very much into mosaic crochet and then you showed a lot of interest for it so today we are going to dig in the mosaic crochet and I'm going to show you that even though it is really intimidating at the beginning it is super easy. The only stitches you need to know are chain, single crochet and double crochet. That is it. And then I am going to show you how to read a mosaic crochet chart, a diagram and, uh, and then from then we're going to move to create this beautiful fall kind of foliage uh, mosaic crochet pillow. You interested? If you are not part of my crochet family, don't hesitate to do so. It's totally free. Click on the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you are notified every time I post something new. Come check me out on my social media as well. We have a lot of giveaways on Instagram and I will have a giveaway here on YouTube as well for you today. So stay tuned until the end. What else can I tell you? Yes, you know how I love fall. So I have been drinking so much coffee. I don't know if you can tell right now, I'm a little hyper, but I've been drinking pumpkin spice coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Oh my God. I have the Keurig machine and I put my little paws in there. So it's not the first coffee in the morning. That's a little too much for me. But in the afternoon, I put the pumpkin spice in it and oh, they sell them on Amazon. If you want to try it, it's delicious. Today, one of you will be able to win the material necessary to create this pillow today. So to participate, super simple. You need to be subscribed to my channel and you need to comment in the comment box down below. That is it. And of course, all my giveaways are always worldwide. So I will find you and send you your giveaways everywhere in the world. Just so you know, because I had that question a few times on my Instagram as well. So everywhere in the world, my giveaways are for you guys. So here is the beautiful pillow. I absolutely love the mosaic crochet and the possibilities are endless. So I would like to put in the info box down below two channels that I found where I actually learned to mosaic crochet. So I had no idea how to do it. I went on those channels. They have so many different patterns, either that are available on their channel or that you can purchase on their Etsy store, I think. It's either Etsy or Ravelry. But I'll put the link to those two ladies that are, I think, amazing. And they inspired me to create what I am sharing with you today. So I want to give them a shout out and don't hesitate to go and uh, visit them as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so I hope you're doing well. I hope the back to school is going well for all the students that are going back to school, may it be at home or in person. Um, yeah, so this is a strange year, but we're going to make the best out of it. And I am looking forward to create many more things for you in the fall and in the winter. So mm, sending you kisses. And if you are interested in knowing how to create this beautiful pillow, then keep up. In the meantime, bye! For this tutorial, you will need three skins of Red Heart Unforgettable in the color Polo and four skins of Barocco Comfort yarn in color Pearl. I think it's 9702. You will need some polyfill, tapestry needle, scissors, and a 5mm crochet hook. All right, so let's talk mosaic crochet. Mosaic crochet is really cool because it allows you to create a pattern with two different colors without having to change color on each and every row and having little pieces of yarn hanging in the back. You simply can connect rows or rounds by skipping a stitch and filling the skipped stitch with a double crochet two rows below or rounds below. You usually use two colors, you can use more, but usually you have one base color and one contrasting color. So in our case, the base color is cream and the contrasting color is the foliage color yarn. Base color in our diagram will be color A, 
and contrasting color will be color B. Usually you will find the diagrams looking something like that. What you want to do is find diagrams that have little X's in them. This is the one that I will teach you to decipher. And of course, I will also take you step by step, slowly but surely. So you're working with two colors, colors A and colors B. One row is color A and one row is color B. In our case, color A will be the cream yarn, which is your base color. And I suggest that your color B always will be a contrasting color to make it work. That's the most, the best result I have with the color A being a base color, like aka cream or pastel color or something light, and B color being the contrasting darker color. So here I have on the right put the number of the row, one, two, three, four, five. And then I have put the color A, B, A, B, A, B, just so you know what row is what. One more important thing, this mosaic crochet is only worked one way. So from right to left, you finish one row, you go back to the beginning of the first row and begin on the right your second row. And then don't let the color fool you. That's just to let you know what pattern we're doing and how the pattern should be looking like. The only thing that you really need to follow is the row, the color of your row, and those X's there. Those X's there are the double crochet that is crocheted two rows below or one row below. And I will show you that and explain that to you, of course, in more details during the pattern. So to resume, you have one row of A, one row of B, one row of A, one row of B. Everything will be single crochet in back loop only, except for the X's. The stitches that have the X's will be a double crochet and you will see it will be double crochet two rows below in the front loop of the single crochet. But like I said, I will take you through it slowly but surely. Let's do this. Take your crochet hook and make a slip knot. Now this pattern is uh, worked in multiple of 12. So depending on the size of your pillow, you're going to make 12 chains plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 until you have uh, the length desired. I chained a total of 84 chains and that was the size I wanted for my pillow. I wanted a big, large pillow, but of course you can do you. Just do a multiple of 12, so 12 plus 12 plus 12. My chain was about 18 inches long. Once you have your desired length and number, you are going to add three chains. And that is very important to keep the count right. And you're going to, in the second chain from your hook, taking both of the loop of your chain, make a single crochet. So in mosaic crochet, the first stitch will always be crocheted through both of the loops. And that is the little V in the diagram right there. And that is throughout your pattern. You are going to continue picking up single crochets, but in back loops only. So you see the first stitch we had made was through both of the loops of your chain and then the rest is through the back loop only. In overlay mosaic crochet, every time you crochet a single crochet, it is in the back loop only, except for the first stitch and the last stitch, which are noted with a V. The first stitch will be kind of a beginning stitch and it will be crocheted through both of the loops of your chain and then single crochet, it will always be in the back loop. And in mosaic crochet, we only go from right to left, never from left to right. So here you are at the end of your first row made with our base color. And the last stitch will be single crocheted through both of the loops on your chain. And then each row is going to have two extra chains. And then you're going to take your scissor. You're going to leave a little tail, not too long. And you are going to fasten off. And then you're going to pull on the end tail really tight. And it's going to create a knot. 
and just like that your work will not unravel that's very important so you're done with your first row which was made with the base color in this case it's cream in our diagram it's color a and the second row you go all the way back to the right remember mosaic or overlay crochet is only worked from right to left and you're going to take your second color which is the contrasting color and you're going to join and you're going to join by making a slip knot dropping the slip knot passing your crochet hook through that first single crochet we had made through both of the loops remember join grabbing that uh, loop of the new yarn passing it through chain one and then in that same stitch you just join now you're going to make a single crochet through both of the loops of the stitch we are at row two we're using color b and we doing we are doing that first single crochet as a edge stitch and we're going to do that at every beginning the edge stitch and then we're going to do a single crochet everywhere all along of that second row i am taking that little end yarn and incorporating it in my stitches so i don't have to sew the loose tail uh, and it's not hanging on the side so that's just a little trick you don't have to do that you can sew it later with a tapestry needle if you like this better i'm carrying it on in the back of my work but you see it's in back loop only single crochets all along that second row this second row will be a row of single crochet but only in the back loop And that's the second row those are two base rows we're just uh, creating the base of our work but throughout your whole mosaic because we're working with two colors you're going to have one row of base color the cream and one row of contrasting color one row of base color one row of contrasting color if you look at the little diagram that i had created for you a is the cream color b is the contrasting color all right that throughout the work all right so i will meet you at the end of your second row and uh, that is a row of single crochet but in back loops only and at the end of your row remember the last stitch will be a single crochet through both of the loops of the stitch and then chain two and fasten off Okay, we are done with our second row this is what your work will look like again going back to the beginning at the right and we are going to tackle the third row which is with our base color so we're going to join the base color the cream color into the first uh, stitch as we have done in the second row so you're going to make a slip knot pass the slip knot through the first both of the first loop of the first stitch chain one and then in that same stitch make a single crochet going through both of the loops again here we go and that's your first border stitch which was created and it would help us assemble it at the end the two panels of your pillow by the way all right so we are at row three we're going to begin to do the overlay mosaic crochet and you will see that it is so so easy to make okie dokie guys so here we are at row three we have our base color you just did your single crochet through both of the stitches in that v little square stitch that you your single crochet that you crochet through both of the loops so the first stitch of your pattern will be a double crochet but in mosaic crochet whenever you have a double crochet you skip a row and you pick the front loop of the row below so in our case you're going back to row one you take the next stitch but the front loop only from row one and you make a double crochet in it 
so you see the next stitch that is not the one you're going to take you're going to go in the first row and remember we had single crochet only in the back loop so you have the front loop of the first row of the single crochet and that is where you're going to do a double crochet so you find the next stitch you go below you find the front loop of that cream single crochet and you make a double crochet in it and by doing so you're hiding the color behind that stitch and that is all it is in mosaic crochet now you're going to take that cream color you're going to find the next stitch so the one behind the double crochet is the one you haven't touched you're covering right and then you're going to go to the next stitch and make a single crochet in the back loop only. I am just taking the end yarn again so I don't have any leftovers and like that I do not need to sew it in but you don't have to do that. What you really need to do is take the back loop of the next single crochet again and single crochet do a single crochet in the back loop three times. So you have the single crochet covered by the double crochet you just made, your first one, and the two, third, and fourth single crochet are single crochet in the back loop only. So now count three stitches. One, two, three. From row one, two rows below that you only had worked in the back loop so you have three front loops left that was your double crochet right here that's one one two three you're going to work in the fourth one there that fourth little front loop you're going to make a double crochet in it front loop from row one right and it really is a game of hide and seek with your crochet covering the color and uncovering the color let it, let it shine so you have one single crochet right behind the double crochet, the single crochet you want up below in the back loop of the row one. And then again, in the three next stitches, regularly you're going to make three single crochet, but in back loops only. So to resume, you do a, a double crochet in the front loop from the first row. Then you do three single crochets in back loop only. And then again, you find the back loop of the next stitch from the first row and you do a double crochet. And that is what you are going to do all along that third row, which is really the first row of your pattern. Right, so you count three front loops from row one and you do a double crochet in the fourth one covering uh, the single crochet from row two with your double crochet in cream do you see how you're covering and revealing that is why it's called overlay you're laying a double crochet over your color when you want to hide it so that is it for your third row three single crochet in the back loop of your second row and then one double crochet in that fourth stitch but in the front loop from the first row and you're going to do that all along and you have little rectangle of colors and then they are framed by your double crochets and that is what your work should look like super cute Here we go, we are at the end of our third row and you're going to end the row as usual with, you're going to have three uh, single crochets in the back loop only and then the last stitch will be a single crochet in both of the loops, chain two and fasten off. 
So always your first and your last stitch, no matter what, will be a single crochet using the both loops. And then at the end of the row, you just chain two and fasten off just to make sure it doesn't unravel. I had incorporated that cream there for a few stitches, so now I can fasten off and you see it's neat. I only have leftovers hanging and yarns on the other side and we'll take care of it uh, eventually at the end of our uh, side of the pillow. I'll show you what to do with them. Fourth row will be the color B, the contrasting color. Again, throughout the whole work, you're going to join the same way, making a slip knot and passing the slip knot through the first stitch, through both of the loops, chaining one, and making a single crochet regular through both of the loops of the stitch. Now, you are going to make one single crochet in the back loop only on top of the double crochet. And then you're going to go and skip a row again. So not in row three, but in row two, you're going to go into that front loop and make a double crochet. It is the front loop that is right after the double crochet you had made in the previous row. Here, let me show you again. Right here, double crochet. Behind that double crochet, you have a stitch that will be untouched from row three. You're going to go to the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're going to make a single crochet in the back loop only. And then in the next and in the next. So three single crochets in the back loop only. Here you go. And then in the next stitch, going to the second row, making a double crochet in the front loop. And then again, three single crochet in the back loop only. So basically you have three single crochets and then a double crochet in the second row, right after the double crochet from row three. And then again, three single crochets. The last one, the third one being on top of the double crochet from the previous row. And then you go to the second row, find that front loop right after the double crochet and you make a double crochet in it. And that is what you're going to do all along that fourth row. I will meet you at the end of your fourth row. This is what your work will look like. Super cool and kind of reaches 3D. I love it. This is the back of your work. Let's fasten off again, the tail end. All right, looking good. And I love the yarn that changes color. I think it gives a really, really nice effect. So here we are at the end of your fourth row. This is the back of your work. This is the front. We finished the third single crochet in the back loop on top of the double crochet from the previous row. We're making our double crochet in the next front loop from the second row. Then, and then we will have two single crochet in back loop only. And then remember the last single crochet is uh, single crochet through both of the loops. That's the last stitch or edge stitch. Then you make two chains, you fasten off, you pull on the end yarn to tie the knot, secure it so it doesn't unravel. We are done with our fourth row. And now I'll show you what to do for the fifth row. It's about more of the same. You take your color A, in our case, it's our cream yarn, and we're creating that kind of labyrinth maze pattern that I love so much. All right, so we are at the fifth row, and for the fifth row and each and every row at the beginning, we're joining. This time we're joining with our base color, color A, joining the same way, making a slip knot, passing the slip knot through both of the loops of the first single crochet from the previous row. 
and then chaining one and making a single crochet in that stitch through both of the loops again and we're beginning our pattern so here we're going to have a single crochet in the back loop only incorporating the tail end if you want that's what I'm doing you don't have to and then a single crochet in the back loop on top of the double crochet from the previous row then skipping a row and going straight to the third row in the next stitch is the in the front loop of the next stitch where we're going to do our double crochet so you see what there is three single crochet in the back loop one double crochet and the double crochet is always right after the double crochet from the previous row and that is what creating that kind of maze labyrinth beautiful mosaic pattern i love it and you see how easy it is it's just a game of uh, hiding and revealing and that's what we're doing and it gives that really that texture because your base color pops out and the contrasting color is recessed and it's so beautiful it's such a beautiful technique i mean love and again super easy three single crochets and then a double crochet, skipping a row up, finding the front loop from the third row and making a double crochet. And that is what you're going to do all along that fifth row. So the part that is a little tricky is after your double crochet, right, in the third row, just make sure that you do not do the next single crochet in the stitch that you skipped. There is one stitch untouched behind that double crochet that you just made, and that is the way you want it to be, right? Um, so what could mess your count off is if you do not leave that single crochet untouched behind that double crochet. You go to the next stitch and then you do your three single crochets and up. You see that double crochet, the stitch behind from row four is untouched and that's the way it should be. And here you go. Look how cool it looks. I will meet you at the end of your row five. Your row five, you're making your double crochet in row three and then you're making a single crochet in the back loop only and that is how you end this uh, row and then chain two and as usual fasten off and pull in see you had a double crochet a single crochet and then of course your last stitch that is the border stitch doesn't really count but we need it and we are ready for a row six Row six again is with your uh, contrasting color, color B in the diagram. You know what to do now in the first stitch as usual. And then you're going to make a single crochet in the next three stitches, bringing you on top of the double crochet. From the previous row and then you're going to make a double crochet in the front loop of row four there you go and then three single crochets the last one being on top of the double crochet from the previous row and then again a double crochet right after the double crochet from row five in the front loop of row four you get the gist of it right and this is basically what you are doing this is your pattern again the diagram will be available to you on my blog you can also rewind to the beginning of this tutorial where i explained it to you so this is basically as hard as it gets. So you see, there is no need to be intimidated by new crochet stitches or techniques. It takes, to me, it takes a little longer to crochet than, than regular crochet, maybe because I am also a beginner and, uh, you know, the counting and also the fact that you just do 
the row from right to left and you have to fasten off, go back to the right side and make sure that you are in sync with your diagram. But once, you know, but it's very, I find it very soothing and very enjoyable. I cannot wait to explore, of course, more patterns and more things to create with it. I think that a blanket would be awesome. We are ending our sixth row with a double crochet in the front loop of the fourth row and then our last stitch which is a single crochet through both of the loops and then chain two and fasten off and you're done with your sixth row. Anyway, so we are creating today a pillowcase and for the pillowcase you will need many 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 more rows of uh, this pattern continuing the same thing over and over and over again until you reach the size that you would like for your pillow i wanted a big pillow so i had uh, at least 84 rows in total but of course you can make it your size let's say you have like me 84 stitches you can make 84 rows to make a square you can make it you know shorter and longer rectangle you are in control I will put the link to my blog and the diagram in the info box down below. So click on it and it will take you right away to the diagram. So you can continue uh, with rows and rows until you reach your desired size. And of course, for this pillow, we will need two sides, two panels, so two squares or two rectangles, whatever the size you choose. And you end with a row of base color. And I will meet you once you have two panels. Look how beautiful it is. And once you have the size of your choice, you fasten off and you make a second panel exactly the same. Same size, same amount of rows. Here I have one that I made and the other one. And you know, one side, you remember, I kind of incorporated the end tails as I crocheted it, so it's pretty clean. But on the other side, the whole side was with this kind of end, you know, each and every row had an end tail, the one that we were we chain to. So I just, you know, take my needle and very patiently, my tapestry needle, and very patiently I sew in the tails at the back of my work. And this I have done already with one panel and almost done with the second panel, just to show you the whole left side would be like that. So it takes a little bit of patience, but it's worth it. I think it's so, so gorgeous. Once you are done sewing all the loose tails, in, I will show you how to assemble those two panels together to create your beautiful pillowcase. And again, let's take a moment to admire how beautiful this pattern is. You just created a beautiful mosaic crochet. And as I told you, you only need to know how to chain single crochet and double crochet. And it looks so more difficult than what it is. Don't you agree? I really, really like it and I'm very proud of you guys. Look, the back looks like this and the front looks like this. Gorgeous. Now the upper part and the lower part of your work looks pretty neat. You had the first base color and I ended my work with a base color row as well. But the sides need some tending, some mending, because you see we had, even though we had uh, done that first and last single crochet through both of the loops, we need to give it a more finished look. The fact that we did that one single crochet will help us creating the border right now. So you're going to join at the corner with your base color yarn. You know how to join by now. Join and then in that same stitch, you make a slip stitch. And to make the side look neater, this is what we're going to do. A slip stitch in every side row 
that we had made. So it will be one slip stitch in color A and then one slip stitch in color B. One slip stitch in color A and one slip stitch in color B. And you will pass your crochet hook through that first stitch we had made, which will be easier. It will be pretty obvious. And when you do your slip stitch, try not to do it too tight. Uh, not too loose either, but not too tight. So you will continue like that, slip stitching along the side until you reach the other corner, the opposite corner, and you will do exactly the same for the other side, the opposite side. Here you go, this is what your work will look like. You see how it looks much neater. It's not, you know, we're not done, we're still going to improve it, but already it looks better than uh, um, the way it looked before the slip stitching. So you're going to slip stitch until you reach the corner stitch and then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to fasten off and you are going to repeat on the other side, the opposite side of your rectangle square, whatever your shape is. And of course you're going to do that on the other side panel on the other square that you have made and so like that just a slip stitching on the side and then fastening off and i will meet you once you are at the end of the second side of the second panel here you go you have two panels you have created a little border on both of your sides of each panel i'm going to sew in the loose tails at the back of your work and then we are going to assemble the two panels together all right so you're going to place both of the squares wrong side facing each other right side facing you i did the two sides on my other panels and at the end of the last side i didn't fasten up so now you're going to crochet assemble the upper part so not the side with the slip stitches the other side a matching stitch to stitch beginning in the corner stitch so you're going to go into your corner stitch right there and go through the corner stitch of the side that is closer to you and through the corner stitch of the side that is further away from you yarn over through both of the stitches and then finish your single crochet and this is what you're going to do all along the side of your pillow cover so you're closing one side then you're going to do the same closing the other side where we slip stitch and that is really going to be helping finding where to single crochet and how to match one stitch from one panel to the next so you're going to do that all around your pillow i will show you what to do when you reach the corner see how nice and neat it is love it here you go this is what your work will look like um, seamless this is the wrong side of your work so you did that one first side, you're reaching the corner, you're making a single crochet in the corner, stitch through both of the sides, chain one, and in that same stitch make another single crochet, you created a little 90 degree angle like that. And then this is the side where we had slip stitch, so you pass your crochet hook through both of the slip stitches and single crochet, both of them together. One slip stitch, two up, and you make a single crochet assembling those two sides again so you're going to do that all around the four corners of your pillowcase but you're going to leave a little opening so you're not going to finish totally because you want to be able to stuff your pillowcase with polyfill so i will meet you once we have three and three quarter sides closed up assembled the same way single crocheting all around So here you go, you are assembling all around, leaving a little opening for you to be able to stuff your pillowcase with polyfill. You need to stuff it quite firmly, firmer than you think because as time goes by it gets a little less fluffier. Don't hesitate to be really generous with your polyfill until you have a really nice shape. 
I love this so much. I love the color, I love the pattern, I love the texture. It's such a fun, fun, fun stitch. So anyway, so filling up with my polyfill and once I am satisfied with the volume, I am going to just close the rest of the side by continuing single crocheting through both of the sides. And then I'll show you what to do to give it some edging. You could just leave it like that, but I like to give it some edging and then make tassels. That's just me. Okay, so I am done with my stuffing. I have the volume I want. I am going to continue a single crocheting through both of the sides until I reach the last stitch and which is the corner stitch. So now I have closed my pillowcase join slip stitch in the first single crochet you had made chain one and single crochet in that same stitch you created a corner and then what i'm going to make is just rows well actually rounds because we are crocheting around the four corners of your pillow rounds four in total or you know you can do two three four or five if you want a really large border you make more rounds but it's single crochet all around and then whenever i meet a corner i do in that corner stitch one single crochet chain one one single crochet and then i continue to the next side etc etc until i reach the size of the border that i liked i liked four rounds of single crochet but you do you so you see i'm reaching a corner here i just wanted to show you in the corner stitch which is the chain one from the previous row. You do a uh, single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the same stitch. Voila, and I did that for four rounds and then I fastened off and I was done with the border. And next I will show you how to make beautiful tassels. Wow, we are learning so many skills. I am so excited to share this with you. All right, let's finish by uh, showing you how to create tassels. So I took one of my bullet journals. You can take any book you want. I wanted my, this is kind of a regular bullet journal size. I will try to find the dimensions for you, but you know, a regular size book that is not too uh, big, unless you want really long tassels. I take my cream base yarn and I just begin to wrap it around and around and around. For thin tassels, I would wrap it 50 times medium 60 and really big tassels fluffy uh, I wrap 75 times around this bullet journal I will try to put the dimensions here on the screen of that uh, little bullet journal that I used so you wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap not too too tight but not too loose <laughs> here we go and what you reach the number of time you tied it around, you are going to take your scissors and you're going to cut. And then you're going to gently slide. <laughs> that is a little bit of the tricky part because you know you need to kind of wrap it around tight, but that's okay. It takes time, but you can do it. Also, when you slide it down and out of your book, try to keep that loop shape. It is very important. Here we go. Good job, Anu. <laughs> have to be a little patient. You place it like that and you need a pair of good scissors. Fabric scissors are awesome because they need to be very sharp. And you take about, uh, I would say, 20 inch little string. Is that 20 inch? Yeah, I would say it's about 20 inch string. You're going to take your sharp scissors and you're going to cut the loop at the bottom making sure you have both even sizes on each side of your finger like that. There we go. Then you're going to take that 20 inch string, place it like so, and you're going to make a knot in the middle, very tight knot. Then I do a second knot just to make sure. There we go. Then you're going to put those two strings, pull them up and let the little strings of yarn hang down. You can shake it, you can comb with your fingers to uh, make them a little more organized and less messy. Here we go. And then you take another piece of a 20 inch string and again, you place it underneath and you place your tassel about one inch from the top. You wrap your new string, new 20 inch string around, creating the top of your tassel. Yeah, it's about one inch. And again, you tight, 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 tight. Make a knot really, really tight. And once you have your tight knot, you wrap it around, making a few more knots, just uh, making sure that 
this part, the upper part of the tassel is really secure. And now it's time to make sure that the bottom is even. So you comb again your tassel. It looks so cute. That would make really cute ghosts for Halloween. Don't you think so? Just an idea. There you go. And then you give your tassel a haircut. You know, make sure that the bottom is even. <laughs> Evening, I guess, the bottom. Oops. It's not so even on that side. Here we go, and your tassel is done. What do you think? Whoops, messy. Messy me. And you have to make three more like those for each of the corner until you have four tassels. And then I will uh, show you how to attach them to each corner. You're going to take your tapestry needle. It's super easy. Super easy, guys. And with both of the loops, you're going to go from the back of your corner to the front in the corner stitch. Just like so. Passing it through the corner stitch. And then through the top middle of your tassel. Just like that. And then back through the next stitch. Either in front of the corner, on the right or on the left. You choose. There you go, going back into that stitch with your tapestry needle. There you go, and then... To go through the middle right there of your, the top, you know, the ball of your tassel and pass your, cro your crochet. And pass your tapestry needle through it a few times just to secure it. And uh, voila, one last one in the middle going through the middle of the tassel and then cutting the edges to make it match with the rest of the tassel. And like that, your tassel is secure. Look how pretty it is. And you're going to repeat this for the three more tassels and you are done, my friends. Look at this gorgeous mosaic crochet pillow it's absolutely stunning i love it i will have to make many many more i chose those colors because it is the fall and you know how i love fall and fall colors this reminds me of all the shades of the foliage in new england so this is it i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial we learned how to create a pillowcase we learned mosaic crochet we learned how to create a tassel as i said the diagram will be on my blog and the written pattern will be posted in a few days i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial as much as i have enjoyed creating it for you i'm looking forward to many more and in the meantime happy crochet even though it is really intimate in the bath if you are not following me on insta oh, no, no, no. if you are not following me then on youtube no mm, uh, 